Ed Marsh talking about industrial sales. Does your revenue growth team know what they have to do to be successful? Do you know what levers to pull to achieve different revenue outcomes or even how hard to pull them? Most people hesitate when I ask these questions. The honest answer is normally no. They'll get some gut feeling, but not much beyond that. And that so sharply contrasts with the way you run production, where you know every tack time. Think about that. Why don't you have the same rigorous grasp of sales KPI? So let's change it. And let's start with simple sales projection math. I get it. I mean, the engineer in you is going to object to some of what we're going to talk about in terms of generalizations and assumptions, and we're going to have to make some. In a perfect world, you'd have all of this in your CRM. I'll drop a video link below with more details on that. And by the time we're done, you're going to be intent on getting there. But for now, let's map out your sales projection math just like you would manufacturing line efficiency. In production, we've, we've, we refer to OEE, the product of efficiency of each step in the process. In revenue growth, I call it ORE, or overall revenue effectiveness. Let's look at the production line of revenue growth by working backwards. Let's say you want $10 million in incremental new revenue growth. That's not account manager reorders, upsell, et cetera. The question is, what's it going to take? So let's assume your average is as follows. An order is 500000 and product extensions can get you to an average of 600 k So you'll need to close 17 orders. If your close rate is 30%, and you have to know really how you measure that, is it quoted, is it qualified, whatever, then you need 57 closable opportunities. If it takes five in-depth initial meetings to create a closable project, you need 285 new account meetings. If it takes three discovery calls for every in-depth initial meeting, you need 855 discovery calls. If prospecting yields one discovery call for every four accounts of outreach and inbound leads convert to discovery calls at one in seven, and your paid LinkedIn ads for target accounts yield four discovery calls per month, and your trade shows generate 800 leads a year, of which 15% end up in discovery calls, then we can calculate that you need 687 prospecting accounts after trade shows and LinkedIn ads between sales prospecting and inbound leads. And if you get 100 inbound leads per month, then you need 510 from your sales force prospecting, or roughly 2,000 accounts being prospected to. In order to generate those inbound leads, if you convert 3% of site visitors, you need 3,500 visits a month. In order to get those visits, you need to rank for X key terms and have a click-through rate of Y. And remember, this is incremental new business. This is all for just new accounts. So this is simple math, and it's excruciatingly painful for most companies because they realize, first, they don't have the necessary data. Second, the numbers shock most people when they understand what's required. But there's no way around it. If you want predictable revenue, you have to know your numbers. The good news is that when you do, we can begin to apply process engineering and continuous improvement. For instance, with a chatbot, we can probably take your visit to lead conversion rate up to 5% and simultaneously boost the conversion rate of those inbound leads to meetings from 1 in 7 up to 2.5 in 7. If you use opportunity scorecards or consistent qualification, then you'll probably boost your close rate from 30% to 50%. Those are just simple examples of two different ends of the process, and there's many opportunities in between. But you can't identify and prioritize if you haven't done the simple sales projection math.